We finally got the parts for Big Red version 5, ladies and gentlemen. An NVIDIA RTX 4090 Founders Edition and the new Intel 13th Gen i9 13900K. Now before I toss all these in Big Red version 5, let's do a quick build with them. So you just build a brand new shiny PC and you're greeted with this nasty notification on the bottom right corner of your screen. Well, instead of going out there and paying full price for a Windows key, you guys can actually get one for less than $15. That's right, you guys can get a Windows 10 Pro CD key for less than $15 by visiting yourcdkey.com or by clicking my link below and using my code TS20 for that extra 20% off. They also sell Windows 11 and Microsoft Office keys and the same discount code applies. Now, once you get your CD key, all you have to do is go into the activation settings on Windows and put in the new key and watch the watermark disappear. <clears throat> <sighs> Introducing Big Black, Big Red's brother from another mother. Bored. I realize the name sounds weird off context, but that is literally the best name I could think of for this build. Unless you guys can come up with a better name, <laughs> let me know in the comment section. Oh man, I miss this case so much. I've always wanted to do a build in the black version of the Helios. And now my dreams are coming true, you guys. Oh, this brings back so many good memories. Oh yes, yes, yes. So we'll be going with the new 13th gen i9 13900K processor from Intel. It's got eight more e-cores than the 12900K and a slightly higher boost clock of 5.8 gigahertz. Now the good thing about the 13th gen processors is that they are backwards compatible with Intel 600 series CPUs because they're using the same socket, LGA 1700. So I'll be sticking with my Z690 formula board for Big Red version five. However, for this build, we are going with the ROG Maximus Z790 Hero. The main difference between these chipsets is that they added eight more PCI four lanes and additional USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 ports. Oh, you also get support for slightly higher memory speeds, up to 50, 600 megahertz, which is 800 megahertz more than the Z690. So since Big Red version five has Dominator Platinums and white, it only makes sense to go with Dominator Platinums and black for the big black build. So we're going with a 64 gigabyte kit running on 5200 megahertz. Now for storage, we're going with a two terabyte PCI Gen 4 M.2 SSD for the main operating system. And we'll be tossing in an eight terabyte Sabrent M.2 SSD for mass storage. So cooling the 13900K is the ROG Ryujin 2 360A RGB. Now the fans on here are RGB, so we're gonna be swapping them out with the XF120s instead because Big Black will be an anti-RGB build. The only lighting source I'm gonna allow inside the case are gonna be from the RAM sticks and possibly from the motherboard, but I'm gonna set those to white just so we can get some lighting in there, but everything else is gonna be basically zero RGB. All right, time to pop in the final piece, the RTX 4090 
Founders Edition. Still can't get over the size of this thing. There we go. Hold on, I wanna try something <laughs> just for fun. I wanna know if I can pop in a 3090 Ti in here. Is there even enough space? Hold up, <laughs> hold up one second. Oh God, this is so stupid. I can't even see the PCI slot. <laughs> I don't know where I'm sticking this in. Oh my God, dude. Oh, we got it. <laughs> what the hell is this? Oh my God. So yeah, technically you can fit a 3090 Ti, but should you? I don't think so. I mean, they're not even the right size. So it looks so weird sitting underneath the 4090. Not to mention the top 4090 is gonna be starved from air. The airflow is gonna be so bad. Um, and it's gonna overheat because the 3090 Ti is pretty much blocking um, the airflow. I wonder how the cable routing would look. We pretty much have no choice but to route the cables underneath the GPU, but I wouldn't even use this stock 16 pin uh, cable. L look at this guys, it looks so freaking messy. Even if you're going with a single GPU, that does not look good. Imagine eight of these things sticking out from your card and going underneath. There's just too much cable clutter. I think the best route would be to use the included 16 pin cable from the power supply. This actually looks so much better. Oh yeah, this is the move. Even some custom cables will look much, much nicer uh, with a dual GPU set up without a doubt. But yeah, this is what a dual GPU configuration looks like. Unfortunately, NVLink is dead, so I'm not able to use the combined power of both graphics cards. I think the NVLink slot is actually, yeah, there's not even an NV link slot over here on the 4090. There is one still for the 3090 Ti. So I guess technically you can do dual 3090 Ti's, which just sounds absurd. And not to mention, we don't even have the power. All right, just for scientific reasons and my entertainment purposes only, I wanna keep the 3090 Ti in there and run some tests. I'm really curious to see how the 4090 is gonna perform with the 3090 Ti blocking its airflow. I'm gonna check out temps as well. And you know, it's just for fun. Obviously, I don't recommend doing this, guys. This is a really bad idea. But just for the sake of the video, I wanna try something different. Okay, this is officially atrocious. That is the ugliest thing I have done on the channel. What even is this? I don't know what Nvidia was thinking when they thought this was a good idea. If I power the PC on and it doesn't explode, I'm honestly gonna be very proud of myself. So here we go. This PC doesn't blow up. I'll be really proud of myself. This is bringing back really bad memories. <laughs> I'm honestly just losing my mind right now. I'm going insane. I'm going insane. Come on, give me something, baby. DisplayPort is plugged in. Come on. Something, anything, even by, yep, there we are. Let's go, baby. Oh, thank Lord, okay. Let me hook up a keyboard and mouse, I'll be right back. All right, guys, here it is. Big Black finally completed. We did get to the Windows desktop screen and I downloaded a few programs for us to test out. There are a few things that changed. Unfortunately, I had to swap out the RAM sticks because I found out they were both using two different timings. So I replaced both kits with a single 64 gigabyte kit running on 5200 megahertz, just so we don't run into any issues while we test the system. As I promised, there is no RGB inside the build. All the fans are non-RGB and I set the lighting from the RAM sticks and the motherboard to white. And of course you got the white GeForce logo from both the graphics cards. So this way there's a bit of light inside. It's not just pitch black, but also there isn't any like rainbow puke going on. So I do want to close the side panel and take a look at some temperatures real quick. We'll start off with the idle temps since the PC has been running for about 30 minutes or so. Okay, let's start off and look at some idle temps from the CPU and both the GPUs. I did load up CPU-Z first, but it looks like it's inaccurate. Uh, it's showing a core speed of 5.5 gigahertz on the 13900K for some reason. It's not overclocked, so I'm not sure why it's showing that. Maybe it's just not updated to support the new 13 gen processors. It does read the 13900K up there, so 
that's interesting. Now, if we look at the actual uh, core clocks on HW Info, we can see a more accurate reading. So 4.7 gigahertz on idle on the core clock, and then we got 4.6 on the ring. The only thing that's accurate on the CPU-Z is the memory reading. So we did enable XMP profile in the BIOS, and it's showing 2600 megahertz, which is correct. It is running on dual channel, so you're basically supposed to double that number, and it becomes 5200 megahertz, which is the same speed as the sticks that we have um, in the motherboard. So let's go back to HW Info and take a look at some temperatures. Starting with idle temps on the CPU, uh, we're actually gonna look at the, um, the CPU package over here and the Core Max. This is gonna show us the hottest core on the 1300K. So it is idling around 42 degrees Celsius, it looks like, with peak temps of 56. I do wanna run a benchmark real quick and see how they actually do um, on full loads. Okay, so we have reached peak temps, you guys. Starting with the graphics card, it looks like it maxed out at 82 degrees Celsius, but it pretty much flatlined closer to 81. I feel like it's at a constant 81 degrees, which is very toasty, I'm not gonna lie. Even for a Founders Edition card, that's pretty toasty. I'm pretty sure 3090 Ti has something to do with it. We will confirm that later, of course. Uh, clock speeds, it looks like we were getting 2685 megahertz on the boost clock for the 4090. Pretty freaking impressive. And then CPU temps, we were looking at uh, 81 degrees peak, but it fluctuates between 60 and 75 degrees. So nothing too crazy, but also nothing, um, nothing impressive. The ROG 360 millimeter AIO did a pretty good job keeping the 1300K temps down. Here's what the PC sounds like, by the way, on full load. I'm literally standing right behind where the exhaust is. So yeah, not like not not 100% silent, but fairly silent considering, you know, we got two massive GPUs in there and a 1300K. I do want to test the 4090 now by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the 3090 Ti and then do the same exact test and compare temps. I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. It looks like the numbers have uh, stabilized. We can now compare temperatures. I was off, you guys. I was off by a landslide. I said about five degrees cooler, if I remember correctly but uh, looks like the 4090 peaked at 63 degrees Celsius and it's staying really close to 61, 62. So that's about 17 degrees cooler without the 3090 Ti underneath it. I don't know what I was smoking on when I said five degrees, which now makes sense. Obviously you have a massive card underneath it restricting airflow. So this pretty much reinforces my original statement. It's a bad idea. Don't put two cards in your system, guys. That's, it's not ideal. Uh, these cards are getting way too big. They're getting way too thick. Um, two cards in your system is pretty much becoming obsolete. They've already killed off NVLink, so if you must put in two cards and you're gonna take advantage of each of them independently, go the water cooling route. Throw a block on there, it'll shrink the size and they each get their own cooling. That's like the only possible solution I could think of. If you're gonna put in two cards with the same exact size of a 4090 Founders Edition or even a 3090, you're crazy. All right, you're crazy. I don't care how big your case is. This is a pretty massive case, and we're still having airflow issues with putting another card underneath there. So yeah, um, not a good idea. But Ed, what about AIB partners? What about other manufacturer graphics cards? They have a better cooler design. I don't think there's gonna be a huge difference, you guys. If you're putting another card literally right underneath the top slot, you're gonna restrict airflow one way or another. Sure, the temps might be slightly better on other manufacturer cards, but overall, it's just not a good idea. Water cooling is the best route for two cars or more. Now, in terms of performance, I can't really give you guys any numbers because the 1300K is still under NDA, so I can't share any performance numbers. I will be upgrading my system with the 1300K and a 4090, so if you guys want performance and benchmarks and stuff, make sure you subscribe for that because Big Red version 5 is coming up really soon. I just gotta find a really nice water block for the 4090 and then we're good to go. But that's pretty much it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do let me know by tossing a like and make sure you subscribe because I'll be upgrading my system with a 4090 very soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.